And I can now proceed siguro dun sa ating natawag na repeatability assumptions. And this is gonna to be for, so ulitin lang siguro natin, no? Ah, uh, yun nga, yun. Kung mayroon tayong repeatability assumption, so alam naman natin yung ating study period is not equal to useful life and among the alternatives, meron tayong iba-ibang comparison ng study period or useful life. So, we will simply compute for the AW over its own useful life. That is the main goal of repeatability assumption. Kasi nga, since iba-iba naman yung ating study period, iba-iba yung useful life. So, kung AW yung gagamitin natin, wala tayong kaso dun sa, ano, dun sa kanyang PW or FW na magkakaiba. Kasi imagine nyo, if the study period is actually um, 100, and then dun sa isa is, ano lang, 10 years lang. So, kapag yun naman yung FW method niyan, and assuming na meron silang almost the same revenue, uh, for for sure, yung FW nung isa, sobrang laki yan compared dun sa isa. Kasi 100 years, yun yung isa, 10 years lang. So, that is what we avoid from oh, for the ano, for repeatability assumption. Kaya, kailangan natin competent is AW kasi that is the best option. Well, you can, we can always try to replicate yung, yung, ano, yung point na, diba, since 10 yun. So, gawin natin is 10 times 10. Palit ulit tayo. But, uh, that is, ano, but that is actually um, less recommended kasi AW method is a lot easier to do that. To, to do. Kasi nga, kakupit mo lang AW and wala ka na kanalaman dun sa pag-replicate nitong, ano na to, nitong first study period just to compensate with all the study period. So, that's why we will be incorporating that. So, ito yung two cases ka. Nasabi ko na rin to before, pero let's just reiterate. Yung useful life is, study, is less than study period for case A. So, yung cost alternatives yung ating usually na kakonsider, tsaka yung investment alternatives for this. And then, for the useful life, skirted na study period, yung the most common technique dito is to truncate the alternatives at the end of the study period. So, alam ba, ito yung, yung uh, time frame, pero yung, yung cash flow or study period is or yung useful life mo is nag-exceed dyan. Parang yung arrow mo is nag-ganyan-ganyan. Ay, ito. So, ito yung sa time frame mo. Sa the period mo yan. And then, pero hello, mix it ka pa dyan. So, what you will do here is to truncate this para magkaroon lang tayo ng certain parang distances dito na magkakasakta pero same lang din yung number of periods mo. So, mangyari lang dyan. Same lang din yung study period mo. But then, um, a useful life. Pero ito, uh, magsisiksikan siya dito. Okay, so, I hope na gagas niyo yung point. So, kailan man to? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, equally space pa rin yan. Doon mo siya ngayon nalalagay. So, that's the idea of truncating your useful life to the study period if it is greater than your study period. But, kung halibawa naman, ito nga yung case, yung letter A. So, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. Actually, napakita ko na sa inyo to before, pero ulitin ko lang ulit. So, halimbawa, um, ito lang yon 3, pero hanggang 18 tayo. So, ulitin mo ulit itong 3 na to. Para magsakto ka lang dun sa ating um, study period. Okay, so parang ito yung first mo, and then second mo to. Hanggang sa maabot mo yung certain study period by repeat, rep repetition. Okay? And then, um, we try to solve these exercises para magets nyo ng concept ng ating repeatability assumption. So, let's have number one. Okay, so for number one, we have the following data have been estimated for two mutually exclusive investment alternatives, A and B, associated with a small engineering project for which revenues as well as expenses are involved. They have useful lives of four and six years. So, kung mapansin nyo, magkaiba na yung useful life. So, in short, they are considered under the repeatability assumption respectively. If M MARR is equal to 10% per year, show which alternative is more desirable by using equivalent worth methods. So in this case, ang atin is not the um, base alternative, but we want to select which is the better option here. And to do that, uh, that's the same concept, pero instead of using PW or FW, we'll be computing for the annual worth in this case. So let us determine the annual worth for A. So remember, this is the capital investment. We need to amortize this in terms of annual um, uniform series uh, payments. So ito wala na tayong problema dito kasi this one is already in terms of annual um, you know, every period. Now we have annual cash flow that is positive. So ina assume natin that this is uh, the profit already. So wala tayong use useful life for each of them. So at the end of 
the uh, useful life nga. So, wala tayong salvage value. So, therefore, market value. So, therefore, yung ating annual worth for A would be this capital investment. So, we have to um, multiply this by... So, diba, this capital investment occurs at the present factors, uh, present um, time. So, therefore, we need to multiply this by the present factor or the reciprocal of the present worth um, uniform series factor. So, that's 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.1. This is your MARR. And then, raise to negative 4 over 0 0.1. But we have to make sure na we raise this to negative 1. Okay? And then, we add the annual cash flow na this positive. So, 1, 2, 5. Five. Of course, we have to make sure that you, you make this negative because this is actually an investment cost. So, yon. And then let's try to find the net value in this case. So, the answer is 150.8522. And actually, kanina parang peso ata na lagi kasi dollars yun. No? Kasi ako anong unit dito din, yun yung unit yung, yun din yung unit na gagamitin nyo. So that's 150.8522 and then we compute for letter B. We have the same concept. So W of B and then 5,000 times 1 minus 1.1 raised to negative 6 in this case and then 0 0.1 raised to negative 1. That's negative uh, plus 1480. Okay, so therefore the annual worth for B is equal to uh, remember again kaya annual worth ginagamit natin para hindi na tayo mag um mag try na mag gawa ng additional repetition of the cash flow kasi kung ganun eh di mo ma mas maging mahirap or mas complicated ating uh, computation so it is best to use this annual worth instead 960 and uh, 9631 okay so knowing the two values of our annual worth the equivalent values are 150.85 and 331.9631 respectively. So to obtain or to select the better option here, we consider the higher or the greater value of our equivalent value for each of them. So in this case, since the annual worth of B is greater than A, so we could say that the more desirable uh, alternative in this case is um, alternative B. And we call A being the base alternative. Okay, so that's it. So you can just uh, pick out B or explain it as your final answer. Now let's proceed to uh, letter um, or number two. Suppose that the previous example is modified such that an analysis period of six years is used. So co-terminated assumption na tayo and then instead of 12 years, which was based on repeatability and the least common multiple of the useful life. So Perhaps the responsible manager did not agree with the repeatability assumption and wanted the six-year analysis period because it is the planning horizon used in the company for small investment projects. So, what happens to the cash flow diagram of this one? So, we don't have problem dito sa A, as a B, because we already have this six-year period. But how about this um, A? So, again, since four-year period lang kanya useful life, you have to um, actually compute for the latter part here. So, halimba, meron tayong uh, let's have 0 dito, tas ito is 6. Okay? Parang 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Wait. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So parang 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? So ito yung mga years niya, corresponding years. And then kung makapansin nyo, at the end of the fourth useful life, so 1, 2, 3, 4. So hanggang dito lang yung ating cash flow diagram. Kasi... Uh, hanggang dito lang kasi yung useful life natin. But we have to um, bring this all to the sixth year. So, I'll be using yung ating future worth kasi that is kind of the easiest part here. So, ang gagawin natin is, diba, this is your uh, capital investment, that's an expenses, and then this annual cash flow is actually um, positive cash flow. So, what we have to do here is to find the net of these two by bringing this capital investment to the future and of course, yung mga annual revenues natin by bringing this all to the future as well. So, pwede ganyan. So, yung net lang naman yan. So, gawin natin is, ibahin natin yung kulay nito. Okay. So, we bring this all to the future. At this point muna, our 
dito. So, kuha na natin yung net and then saka natin ulit i-diretso dito sa ating 6 here. Para at least mag-match yung ating um, capital or the investment. At least para mag-match yung ating useful life dun sa ating study period. So, ito yung sinasabi kanina na nagiging complicated kasi what happens is that uh, we try to compute for the net on kung hanggang saan useful life lang siya and then we try to extend that on the useful uh, or the study period na kailangan natin. Pero for this case, sabi, wala naman tayong problema. So, ganun ang gawin natin ngayon. Hanapin natin muna yung sa future worth ng B. Though, pwede rin naman ng present pero it would be um, well, mas madali yung future natin kasi Pwede natin siyang idiretso lang dito. Pero let's try doing that kung um, later na lang. So, FWB. So, this would give you 5,000 capital investment. So, we have to bring this to the future. So, that's 1 plus 0 0.1 raised to positive 6. And then, we add yung ating annual cash flow. Pero, we have to make sure na uh, we use the future worth uh, uniform series factor. So, that's 1.1 uh, raised to 6 minus 1 over 0 0.1. Now, the future worth of this um, problem, so, kailangan pala is negative to nakakalimutan ko. Okay, so, that is equal to 2561.2978. Okay, so, that is 2561.2978 dollars. That is the value of your future worth for B. Now, about for A. So, for A, let's take a look at the net. So, that is negative uh, 3,500 we multiply this by 1 plus 0 laki naman nung ano bracket parenthesis so 1 plus 0 0.1 we raise this to uh, ilang years pa yun so we just take muna yung 4 so that is 4 and then plus natin ngayon yung 1 to 5 5 quantity 1 plus 0 0.1 raise to 4 minus 1 over 0 0.1 and then um we multiply all of these by the factor. So, yun lang naman is yung um, compound factor natin. That's 1 plus 0 0.1 raised to positive 2 para maging total of 6 years sila. So, with this, the present worth of your, uh, the future worth of your, um, but ito yung B? A and A. So, the future worth of your alternative A would be equal to 847 point one two seven zero uh, or one point two seven one dollars so in short by analyzing this using our study period of six years by extending yung pop for third into two years by compound interest we could see that the st still the best option or the better option here would be the alternative b unlike a wherein ang kanya future worth would be eight four seven lang for the because that would be 2561.2978. So, uh, that is how we compute for this using our co-terminated assumption knowing na that's 6. Now, kung halimbawa naman, ginamit natin is uh, present worth. So, ang gagawin natin, so, babalik naman natin sila sa present. So, kung halimbawa, 6 to. So, pabalik siya. And then, babalik ulit natin lahat. So, wala tayong problema dito sa capital investment kasi nasa present naman siya. But how about our um, annual um, payment. So, parang ito kasi, ang mangyayari dyan, meron pa ditong certain factor tayo na consider which is dun sa 6. So, ano ba yung factor na yon So, technically, parang kung mag-start tayo dyan, parang maging deferred siya dun sa dulo, di ba? Kasi you still have to pay for the next years and then we try to um, parang ano siya, parang i-repeat natin. So, that would be quite difficult for us kasi parang Ano ba talaga yung magiging, ano, will we still, will we, will we repeat this sa two, ano lang, sa two, uh, by two payments lang? Or we still have to, like, consider this na deferred na siya and wala na tayong payment? So that would uh, be very, parang kind of confusing for us kasi hindi naman stated sa problem na uh, we could use parang a combination of parang repeatability and co-terminated assumption in this case. So parang blanco talaga siya in that case. So, what is best here is to just use the future worth kasi yun yung ating possible ano dito eh, solution talaga na wala tayong parang masagasaan na parang certain assumptions pa if ever. Okay? Hopefully, malinaw yun. Pero dito kasi kung present worth naman na kailangan natin kukuhanin, wala tayong problema. Um, madali lang din siya yung formula natin. I e, reverse lang natin itong mga movement ng cash flow natin. And in addition to that, Alam naman natin na wala tayong direct formula for the 
uh, deferred, parang deferred annuity. For the present, kung siya is na deferred after some end payments, diba? That cash flow diagram being deferred in the sense na wala na time payments from the 5th and 6th year period, the formula that is applicable for that is yung parang future worth natin for deferred annuity. So, we will try to use that as much as possible. Before kasi, tinry ko lang uh, pakita sa inyo kung paano when it comes to a point na makalimutan yung ganong formula. But for this case, it's um, a lot easier for us to go back to this original formula that we have already memorized. Kasi pwede naman na ang gawin na lang is try to uh, perform yung ating yun nga, yung compound factor natin for the present worth. Okay, so with this, uh, let's move forward na dun sa ating um, by the way, yung answer niya should be something like this. On the basis of the six-year study period, alternative A is more is made to exceed its useful life. Still, the alternative B is the best option. Okay, so I think uh, you could do number three from this. Gamitin niyo lang yung annual worth. Now, I think I'll, I need to go back to your number one and just to show you how it is done when you want to solve for the repeatability I mean, the present worth using the, under the repeatability assumption. So, sabi natin before kasi, when we have the repeatability assumption, kailangan yung ating study period would be the same. And that is something like the multiple of your uh, useful life. So, in this case, yung ating useful life is 4 and 6. So, therefore, yung ating study period would be 12 kasi that is the lowest common multiple for this. And for the present worth of A, we could compute that using our uh, uh, study period of 12 that is diba meron tayong tatlong 4 years parang ganun na mangyayari dyan na umuulit okay gawa mo lang tayo ng cash flow diagram extending this to our study period of 12 years so this is your first year so magkara tayo ng expenses for the capital investment so ito yun and then meron tayong annual cash flow na inflow parang ganun so, revenue natin to, 4 years. Okay. So, sa apat na taon, meron tayong um, ganyan na payment. So, ba? And then, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then, uulitin natin ngayon itong um, figure na to or yung ating cash flow diagram for the fifth year. So, parang ito yung, uh, ito yung sa first year, ba? So, for the uh, next uh, 4 years, so, ito 5, 6, so, diretso natin ito hanggang 12 para mabilis tayo. Then, saka natin ilagay yung mga, ano, mga capital investment later. Okay, 4, 8, and then kailan magkaroon tayo ng 12 kasi 12 yung study periods natin eh. 12 yung study period lang. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so hanggang dito yung ating study period. 12 na yan. Okay, and then, um, ito yung 1, 2, 3, 4. So, parang dito siya inate. Okay. And then, where do we put yung ating capital investment? So, uh, remember, this is 4 years. So, parang mangyayari lang dyan. So, divide nyo lang yun, yung inyong useful life, ay, yung study period dun sa ating useful life. So, that's 12 divided by 4. So, parang 3. Remember, um, useful life to. So, 4 and then plus 4 ulit. So, we have uh, 8. So, that is... 1, 2, 3, 4. So, yung una natin is dito. So, fourth niya. And then, 1, 2, 3, 4 as well. So, dito yung huli niya. Okay? Pero, you have to make sure na hindi na natin sasama or i-incorporate ito. Kasi parang ang condition niya is that we started with 0. So, dapat ah, hindi na natin siya incorporate with our computation. Para kasing, diba, we know naman that the study period divided by the useful life would be 3. So, parang tatlo lang talaga yung capital investment na lalabasan. Which is just this at 0, at 4, and then at 8. And then we can um, we can move this all to the present. So, starting from this uh, annual cash flow and then yung ating mga capital investment. Okay. So, the present worth would be equal to 1, 2, 5, 5. And then we multiply this by 1 minus 1.1 raised to negative 12 kasi we have 12 study periods and then 0 0.1. And then plus or minus natin kasi the, those are expenses. So we have 3,500. So ito yung una dito sa zero time. Or yun yung nasa present. And then minus 3,500 for the fourth year. So that's 1.1 raised to negative 4. And then minus 3,500 as well dun sa parang pa-8 niya. 
that's 1.1 raised to negative 8. And then wala na yung 12 kasi magkakaroon tayo ng apat if we try to add that. So therefore, the present worth of your A would be equal to 1,027.8603 dollars. Okay. Now for your present worth of your B, so madali lang naman to, maulit lang siya ng 2 times, so that's um, negative 5,000 minus 5,000 times 1.1 raised to negative 6. And then yung sunod natin would be minus 5,000 times 1.1 raised to negative 12. At no need na pala na negative 12 kasi uh, dalawa lang sila. So yung ito kasi yun, di ba? Yung una mo is yung initial and then yung pangalaw mo is yung sa 4th year and then yung pangatlo nito is yung sa 5th uh, year. So ito kasi is dalawa na siya so hindi natin kailangan incorporate yung last. And then plus, so wala na siyang kadugtong, wala na siya sa 12 kasi yun yung pinaka last niya yung uh, 6 lang. Kasi di ba, if we have 12 divided by 6, that's 2. So dalawa na tong capital investment. So plus 1480 times 1 point, uh, sorry, 1 minus 1.1 raised to negative 12 and then divided by 0 0.1. So, kailangan parehas lang din sila ng study period. And this uh, gives you a value of 2,261.8942. So, therefore, using the repeatability assumption of the present worth, therefore, B is still the better option. So, ito, again, inulit lang natin yung number 1 without using yung ating annual worth. Pero sabi ko nga, mas madaling gamitin lagi annual worth kasi hindi natin siya kailangan hanapan ng study period and then we try to um, draw another cash flow diagram that extends from that certain useful life that is less than the study period and then uh, try to replicate that or make a repeatability assumption to that certain study period that we need. Especially basing on the less, least common multiple of the two alternatives. So, kasi halimbawa, what if, ano yan? Let's say we have five alternatives and then yung inyong yung LCM sobrang laki. So, syempre, ang haba ng ating cash flow diagram, so that always the best option would be yung inyong annual worth. Kasi nga, um, di na siya parang, di na siya practical gamitin. Ganun. So, yun. Kaya, it's always the recommended version. Pero, I just want to show you how it is done using the present worth and the future worth. So, dalhin nyo lang yun sa future. Ganun lang yung maging concept. And I hope you were able to understand this. So, I hope you can solve for number 3. So, ito naman is dalawa lang din, machine 1 and machine 2. Pero, yun nga, meron tayong 5 years and 8 years. So, yun lang yun. And then, um, we actually have the hours here. So, usually kasi, pag meron tayong operating hours, yun yung kinoconsider din natin na one factor. So, kung ba, 5, 8, 50 hours, and then meron lang tayong 2,000 uh, hours per year. So, you could divide that, and then you'd be able to get yung um, operating time per year nung um, machine na yan. Okay, so, and then just use yung inyong mga details dito and then just compute for the annual worth. Kasi, we have different values of M1 and M2. And this is under the repeatability assumption. Okay, so hopefully I masolve nito. And then, I think we're done with the, uh, yun na lang yun, mutually exclusive project. So, ganun lang naman siya. Wala tayong bagong formula na incorporate dito. It's just that Meron tayo kayo consider na alternatives. And again, alternatives are the choices that we have in order to pick up the or pick the best options of the, uh, let's say, investment or uh, probably the proposal business that we have. Kasi hindi na tayo dun lang tayo sa parang, di ba, usually pag single business lang. So let's just try to compete for the present worth. If it's if it will be profit, profitable, then let's go for that business. But in this case, since it's a company uh, doing a lot of businesses and providing a lot of proposals from certain, let's say, experts, so it could probably be that these projects are existing and then we can create this from all the data that we have and then we can try to uh, choose between these projects which would give us the most economic or most profitable um, yeah, monetary value that uh, we can get. So, yun lang naman yung um, pinagkaiba nito dun sa ating previous discussion. And those are um, just comparison. And then, um, let's proceed to the next discussion which is all about the evaluation of independent projects. So, again, yung ginawa natin is exclusive or mutually exclusive projects. So, 
ang case kasi nito usually is parang meron tayong mga factors talaga na magkakaparehas. For example, yung machine one, ito, parang ano yan, parang, parang kumbaga sa ano is, um, meron tayong certain comparison, pero meron tayong similarities between these two comparisons. Pero when it comes to the next discussion, which is all about the independent projects, we usually don't have any common factor. Or kung meron man, napaka, ano lang, simple lang. So, we'll try to uh, deal with those and then ano ba yung best method on dealing with those kind of projects na hindi naman talaga, wala talagang common denominator between these uh, projects. Okay?